Hello and welcome to New York Penn Station and Amtrak's Moynihan Train Hall. Today we're going to be taking a first class ride on Amtrak's Acela from here to Boston, Massachusetts. Our journey today will take us from the heart of New York City and New York's Penn Station up the Northeast Corridor to Boston, the corridor's northernmost terminus. We'll start our journey heading east out of Penn Station, turning north and following the coast of the Long Island Sound through Connecticut. Once entering Rhode Island, the tracks turn inland toward Providence and on to Massachusetts before arriving in the Boston South Station. Our journey will cover a total of 231 miles up the eastern seaboard, with a travel time of 3 hours and 43 minutes. Moynihan Train Hall is Penn Station's most recent expansion, opening on January 1st of 2021. The hall plays host to Amtrak and the Long Island Railroad with connections to the New York City subway and New Jersey Transit through the underground passageways. The hall itself is absolutely gorgeous. Covering a total of 31,000 square feet, the hall gives access to tracks 5 through 16 with an enormous skylight above for plenty of natural lighting. Across the hall from where we stand is Amtrak's newest Metropolitan Lounge and our first stop on this journey up the Northeast Corridor. Access to lounges across the Northeast is granted to passengers with same-day first-class or sleeper accommodations. Same-day in this case means that even if you are traveling much later in the day, or just got off a train at your final destination, then Amtrak will grant access to their lounges. Entrance is also granted to passengers with Amtrak Select Plus or Select Executive Rewards status. An Amtrak attendant at the top of the escalators checks our ticket, allowing us entry into Moynihan's Metropolitan Lounge. Just to the right of the entrance are plenty of lockers, so passengers don't have to worry about looking after their bags while relaxing in the lounge. The lounge itself is incredible, with plenty of places to sit and relax or get some work done. Amtrak provides free Wi-Fi for all passengers, plus a business center with a printer for those still on the job. Train information is never more than a few feet away, with multiple information screens located throughout the lounge. With the scheduled departure time of 3 p.m., our train, Acela 2164, has just crept on to the bottom of the screen. One great feature of Amtrak's newest Metropolitan Lounge is the full-service bar, with plenty of snacks, drinks, and larger meal options. Options include salads, sandwiches, pastries, and other snack items to eat, plus a large selection of sodas, coffee, and alcoholic beverages, all of which are complimentary. If that isn't enough, larger food options can be purchased from the bar menu, which include a margarita flatbread, chicken alfredo pasta, a charcuterie plate, and an artesian cheese plate. I was getting pretty hungry, so I chose a couple items for lunch. For this first trip to the bar, I went with a fig and smoked provolone sandwich, a vegetable wrap, and a bag of barbecue chips to eat, with a cold brew iced coffee to drink. I also snagged a bottle of cola for later. The sandwich was a perfect balance between sweet and savory, but the veggie wrap could have done with some more sauce to spice things up. My one complaint here is that the portion sizes were rather small, which meant I was left hungry, but seeing as everything is complimentary, I didn't hesitate to go back for seconds. In addition to all of the usual seating, the lounge includes seats on the balcony overlooking the main hall. Although the chairs out here aren't that comfortable, and it's too loud to really get any work done, it's a great vantage point to see the entirety of the station hall. Suspended high above the floor is an enormous four-faced clock. Measuring in at an impressive 12 feet high and 6 feet wide, the clock is easily legible from even the furthest reaches of the station. Having finished up my lunch, I was in the mood for something sweet, so I made another trip back up to the bar. The Metropolitan Lounge offers a selection of candy and sweet pastries for passengers looking to ease their sweet tooth. I chose a bit of both, going with a chocolate croissant and a York peppermint patty. The Metropolitan Lounge at Moynihan is very nice, and I have to say well done to Amtrak for creating and maintaining such an incredible lounge. The staff were very nice and attentive, and the food selection was vast and tasty, and everything was very clean. My only complaint is that there were not really any proper meal options. To really stand out with the best of the best when it comes to lounges, then a good food selection is a must, and with only smaller items, it's hard to get a proper dining experience. 
Outside of that, it's still a great lounge. An announcement is soon made that our train will be departing shortly from track 11, so we'll head down to the station hall to get ready for boarding. As the pandemic reaches its end, passenger numbers have climbed back up, and our train is no exception. All seats in first class were booked for our journey today, and I wouldn't be surprised if business class was too. Our train finally arrives, and we can head down the escalators to track level. Waiting for us on track 11 is our beautiful Amtrak Acela. Leading our train today is Power Car 2030, with 2031 trailing. First class is the last car on our train today, but the first that we come across, making it super easy to board our train. After finding our seat, our train leaves the platforms of Penn Station behind, marking the beginning of our 3 hour and 45 minute journey up to Boston. We're seated today in seat 11F a window seat in first class. First class seating is very spacious, with around 23 inches of width and 42 inches of pitch, which leaves me with a solid foot and a half of space between my knees and the seat in front. Each seat includes a footrest which extends down from the seat back. As with most other footrests, the resting position is too high for my liking, but it's still a nice feature to have. The tray table is stored in the seat back and requires passengers to pull up to release the table, which can then be folded out. The table is quite large, with more than enough space to use a laptop or have a meal. Above the seats in each row are reading lights controlled by the buttons on either side. Each light has a high and low setting, which can be cycled through by pushing the button again. Outlets are provided along the walls of each row, although these are located closer to the floor than traditional Amtrak outlets. These older train sets still feature the long-forgotten in-seat entertainment systems that have yet to be removed. The system would allow passengers to plug in and listen to a variety of channels on their journey, although it has long since been disconnected. Seat adjustments are made by the button just in front of the control panel, which reclines the seat rather far. Although seeing as there was another passenger dining behind me, I didn't want to go too far. If the windows get too bright, Amtrak includes blinds to provide some shade from the outside. They're a little old school, however, with each blind pushed to the side instead of neatly rolling away into a hold above the window. Larger bags can be stored in the enormous storage bins above each seat. The first round of complimentary service comes before we even exit the tunnels below the East River. First up is a bottle of Fiji water and the Amtrak Acela menu. The menu, although not very long, rotates about every three months, allowing regular passengers to experience different flavors on their daily commutes. Passengers are given one meal for each half of the corridor, with New York City being the halfway point. Exiting the tunnels below the East River and onto the viaducts through Queens reveals some unbelievable views of the Manhattan skyline. As we pass over Hellgate Bridge, the views keep getting better, as the Robert F. Kennedy Bridge fills the foreground, with the skyline standing tall beyond. Soon after, our car attendant comes back through with a selection of warm nuts. The nuts were a great way to start the journey. With a combination of sweet and savory flavors, they were enough to whet one's appetite without ruining the coming meals. After passing out the nuts, our attendant takes our drink order. Amtrak offers a wide variety of drinks to first-class passengers, with everything from liquor, cocktails, and hard seltzers to the usual selection of Coke products, coffee, and juices. I opted for a classic ginger ale on this first leg of our journey. Pelham Bay Railroad Bridge and the Hutchinson River are our next landmarks on our journey up north. 
First built in 1907, the movable railway bridge allows for maritime traffic to pass through unobstructed. However, rail traffic is limited to just 45 miles per hour over the span. A replacement for the now 115-year-old bridge is in the works, but construction has yet to begin. As we cruise out of New York City and up the coast of New York, let's take a quick look at some stats about our train and the route. Taking us to Boston today is Amtrak Acela number 2164, and is driven by Power Car 2030 at the front, with 2031 bringing up the rear. Each Acela Power Car is driven by Alstom's three-phase AC traction motors, which produce 6,200 horsepower for a combined 12,400 horsepower per train. Acela train sets are rated for a top speed of 165 miles per hour, but operational speeds are limited to 150 miles per hour and only in select areas. Our route today will cover a total of 231 miles between New York and Boston, with six station stops before our arrival into Boston's South Station. With a total travel time of 3 hours and 45 minutes, the speed averages out to around 62 miles per hour. This may not be super fast, but it's a good 12 miles per hour faster than driving between Penn Station and Boston. Tickets on Amtrak's Acela will cost around $100 for business class and $234 for first class between New York and Boston. Alternatively, passengers can opt to take the slightly slower Northeast Regional Service, which ups the travel time to 4 hours and 18 minutes, but offers coach options for as low as $41. Because I booked in advance, I was able to purchase our first class ticket for $190.97. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. If you want to go the extra mile with your support, then check out the channel's Patreon. If you want your name in the video, access to exclusive weekly posts, and even the opportunity to vote on future videos, then click the link in the top right or in the description below to learn more. Bathrooms in first class are located towards the end of the train. Unlike business class, first class only has one dedicated bathroom, although passengers can use the bathrooms in business class if need be. The facility is an accessible bathroom, which means it's very spacious. The sink works well with both hot and cold water, plus plenty of soap. All of the paper products are well stocked, which includes cups among the usual suite of bathroom amenities. The mirror above the sink is huge, accented by the diffused LED strips around the outside. The outer wall features a frosted glass window for natural light, plus a second mirror. Overall, I think it could certainly have used a deep clean to really brighten things up, but if you look past the appearance, the facilities are more than functional, and it's actually fairly nice. Just outside the restroom is a segmented display showing our train's origin, destination, and next stop. As I would find out a little later in the journey, the next station was actually one stop behind. Amtrak also offers water to all passengers from dispensers throughout the train. The one in first class was working well and included plenty of cups. New Haven is our next stop and the first major station stop on our route. With service from Amtrak's Acela, Northeast Regional Valley Flyer, Hartford Line and Vermonter, CT Rail Shoreline East and Hartford Line, and Metro North's New Haven Line, New Haven's Union Station serves as a major connection point between commuter and inner city rail. Station stops are very quick with Amtrak, and we're on our way again just a few minutes later. Despite being some of the least straight track on the corridor, our train picks up speed reaching 125 miles per hour on the stretch between Branford and Stony Creek. Unfortunately, our bout with triple digit speeds is short lived as we reach the old Saybrook Bridge over the Connecticut River. Built in 1907, much like the Pelham Railroad Bridge we crossed earlier in the journey, trains are limited to 45 miles per hour due to its age. Amtrak has identified two potential alternatives to the aging bridge, however construction work is yet to begin. Complimentary Wi-Fi is provided to all Acela passengers. Connecting to the network is easy, and after a few short clicks we're online, or at least it appears that way. 
Taking a look at the actual internet speeds, the network doesn't reach more than 1 megabit per second, which is abysmally slow. It's possible that the connection in this car specifically wasn't good, as on my previous Acela journey in business class, I experienced no such issues. New London, Connecticut is next up on our journey. Although it isn't a station stop, it still feels like one as we slow down for the ridiculous curves around the coast. The inland docks and the Thames River Bridge provide some great views as we snake our way around the city. Included in first class is a full meal, which can be brought to your seat whenever you like. The menu offers four options for lunch and dinner, of which I opted for the savory Mexican souffles with street corn. Our food was ready almost immediately after informing our car attendant, which was great because I was getting pretty hungry. The main dish came with two souffles on a bed of Mexican street corn with a roll on the side, plus a roasted poblano pepper sauce and a rich chocolate and brownie mousse for dessert. Passengers may also select a drink of their choice from the usual menu, of which I chose another bottle of water. Honestly, the food was great. Was it the best meal I've ever had? No, but for a dining experience at 150 miles per hour, it was excellent. The souffles, which really ended up being veggie patties, were actually very good, with a robust bean and chili flavor, highlighted by the topping of peppers. The street corn was a great pairing, just savory enough to add to the dish, but not bold enough to steal the show. And the poblano sauce really brought everything together, adding a light citrus note to the plate. The roll was pretty standard, but was a welcome side to the main. The real star of the show, for me at least, was the dessert. The chocolate mousse was rich and smooth with a moist sweet brownie at the bottom, which was incredible. I'm always a fan of chocolate, and this really hit the spot. For a complimentary dining service on board a high-speed train, I have to say this was a solid 9 out of 10. Although the selection wasn't too broad, what I ended up with was more than enough and it tasted great. As good as the main was, the dessert was still the best thing on the plate and really hit home the dining experience on board the Acela. Crossing over into Rhode Island, our engineer puts the pedal to the metal, bringing our train up to its top speed of 150 miles an hour. Rhode Island is one of only three places on the corridor where track speeds reach their limit of 150 miles an hour, with the others being the stretch from Providence to Sharon, Massachusetts, and the newly added stretch between New Brunswick and Trenton in New Jersey. Although not the fastest in the world by any means, the Acela is the fastest train in the US by far, and you really get a sense of that speed as you see the world whip past the window. One fifty will soon be a thing of the past. Amtrak is set to begin replacing the current fleet of Acelas with Alstom's Avalia Liberty train sets in the near future. The Avalia Liberty will reach top speeds of 165 miles an hour on existing track, with the potential to reach 186 miles an hour using Alstom's Tiltronics active tilting technology. These new trains will also feature brand new interiors with personal outlets and USB ports and winged headrests for more separation from fellow passengers. The new trains will operate business and first class in the same configuration as on the current Acela, with a 2x2 and 2x1 respectively, but with 82 more seats. The new trains are absolutely gorgeous, and I cannot wait to see them in service. I will do my best to head back out to the northeast for the first revenue run of the Avalia Liberty, so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be around when the time comes. Providence and Route 128 come and go as we continue on our way up the corridor, with the Boston suburbs soon filling the window. Downtown Boston is served by two stations on the Northeast Corridor, Back Bay and South Station. Although only a few minutes from Boston's South Station, Back Bay still serves as a major access point to Boston's Lower West Side. The towers of downtown Boston make their appearance on the horizon, and not a few minutes later we're pulling into our final destination. As our train comes to a stop, we can grab our belongings and disembark into Boston. Our journey would not be complete without a quick look at the gorgeous train that brought us here.
Heading down the platforms, we can make our way into the station hall. Serving as the northern terminus for the Northeast Corridor and most of MBTA's commuter lines, South Station cements itself as Amtrak's fourth busiest and the MBTA's most busy station by far. For passengers who have just arrived in first class, access to Boston's Metropolitan Lounge is included with their ticket. Despite having been refreshed in 2018, the lounge is rather basic. Amenities include the usual private seating areas, business center, and complimentary Wi-Fi, but the food and drinks are significantly more limited than Moynihan's Lounge. Instead of the more substantial meal items found at the beginning of our journey, here passengers will be able to choose from a selection of light snacks. Drinks are all self-serve and include coffee and tea, plus a variety of sodas, juices, and water. Beyond that, the journey ends here for most passengers, which also marks the point where we'll bring today's video to a close. Next week, we will be back in Texas to take a gorgeous sunset ride on Amtrak's Sunset Limited from Houston to San Antonio. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. If you liked the video, drop it a like too. There's a lot more incredible content on the way, so stick around if you want to see more. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.